Hey people, this video is for all drummers because we all can be faced with a situation where we are not able to practice on a real drum kit. So it doesn't matter if you're a beginner and you don't have a drum kit yet or you can't afford a drum set or a practice room or for certain reasons you have to stay at home for a longer period but still want to practice, here are a lot of practical tips for you. With all of these methods and tricks I'm about to tell you, you are able to practice very effectively for the drum kit. Maybe even a little bit more effectively because, let's face it, even if you can practice on a drum set, you can still waste a lot of time if you're not focused. So maybe these methods might help you practicing some very essential basic skills as well. Those could be listening very closely and seeing potential, musical potential in everything. So the right attitude towards practicing is important and with, with these tricks you can train your focus, your concentration and also time management, spending your time, your limited time, very wisely. Speaking of limited time, let's dive right in. The first tips are about how to practice on a real drum kit even if you don't have one in your home. The first one is of course having your own practice room. I myself have rented a space where I have built my own studio because of course the drum set is mostly a loud instrument and mostly you're not able to practice at home so it's better to have a separate space. But if you don't have your own drum set or you can't afford uh, renting a separate space for that, then you could ask some friends or relatives. Maybe you know someone who has a drum kit and you can visit them and practice on their drum kit or you know people who play in a band, if they have a practice room, you can ask if you can use their practice room and their drum set to practice every once in a while. Here in Germany and probably in other places around the world too, um, especially in the cities, there are some providers of practice rooms which are already equipped with instruments. So you don't have to own your own instrument, you just book a time slot, go there and practice. And in a music school in Iran I have even seen these little practice boxes, small soundproof boxes with a drum kit, music stand, a shelf and air conditioning. That's perfect. So find out if there is something like that in your area. And even if not, be creative, be proactive. Go out and talk to some people. There are so many opportunities. Think of youth centers, public schools, music stores, recording studios. Just ask someone of these institutions um, if they are willing to let you practice on their instrument, maybe for a small fee and maybe just once a week and then you have um, maybe a handful of spots where you can practice on different drum kits. Where there's a will, there's a way. If you take advantage of any of these possibilities, you will probably have just very limited time to practice. So it's essential that you have a good plan. You should make a uh, good plan, what you want to practice and for how long. And that's by the way also what I talk about in my workshops about efficient practicing. Hope to see you there someday and also on this channel. So why not subscribe right now? So now on to the much larger part of tips on how to practice without a drum set at all. If you want to play the drums, of course you should sit down at the drum set as much as possible. But as I already said, that's not always possible. So here are a lot of things you can do instead. But even if you have the chance to practice on a drum set regularly, you should try them out and you should use some of them because they are all very interesting and helpful methods and you can use them as supplementary methods to aid your learning. First one is of course the practice pad. Every drummer should own one because it's very very practical to uh, practice for, for practicing hand technique because you're not distracted by the noise. That's also why you can uh, use it in your home and don't disturb your neighbors. But you don't have to buy one by the way. You could make one yourself because it doesn't have to be pretty, uh, it doesn't have to be round, it just have, has to be functional. So just take some material that's flexible and glue it onto a piece of wood, something that's hard. So just take rubber um, and glue it onto a piece of wood. Um, and this can have uh, another benefit because these usual practice pads which you can buy, I think that the rebound they offer is unrealistically good. So the stick bounces back way better than on most drums and most cymbals and I have made um, a practice pad myself and the rebound is not as good as this one and this way just a little bit more realistic. But even if you don't have any kind of practice pad handy you can just improvise one by again 
putting some um, elastic material on a hard surface like a piece of cloth or a mouse pad which usually sticks to the table and many of them um, have just the right elasticity to practice on. If you want to practice even more realistically then you could use several practice pads or you just play with one hand on the practice pad and the other one plays on the armrest of a sofa or on a chair or you just um, divide your practice pad up into several regions and there are even, even some uh, specific practice pads with different surfaces. You could also take, if you have, um, a bass drum pedal and just play against um, a suitcase or play against a sofa and then you have the whole coordination between the limbs. Or of course with the feet you just tap on the floor. But in that case be careful. You should practice just like you want to play later on on the drum kit. There are two basic foot techniques. Heel up where your heel stays in the air and you move the whole leg, move the, the knee up and down and heel down where the heel rests on the floor or the base plate of the pedal and you just move from the ankle. And many people even though they usually play heel up tend to play heel down when they are practicing on the floor. So you should know what you want to play later on and if you play heel up you should make a noise with your heel on the floor or just tap with the ball of your foot on the floor. There is another tip which you have probably heard before and that's play on pillows. Many great drummers like Louis Belson or Buddy Rich say that's a great workout for your wrists and your forearms and that's true because pillows don't have any rebound at all. So, um, so that this on the other hand is also not very realistic. But yes, sometimes we have to play on parts of the drum set where, where there is almost no rebound like the low toms or the hi-hat or crash cymbals so it's good to be able to do that but don't do it too much because you could strain your your muscles and your wrists and you want to practice in a way that's pretty close to how a real drum set feels so again playing on pillows is just a supplementary method. I would rather recommend taking some object, anything, and make music on that. I have played so many great drum solos on this sofa. Just take anything uh, that makes some different sounds and try to make music on that. This also calls for your creativity. In this manner you could practice anywhere and with anything. If it's not about the technique but more about the rhythmic understanding or the coordination you could just practice with your hands on your thighs or do it like Ari Honig who rides his bike through New York City and plays poly rhythms with his brakes. And there are some rhythmic traditions which take this to the max by just using the body and the voice and this can deepen your rhythmic understanding. So if for, for a certain time you don't have access to a drum kit, maybe try out conakol or taketina or beatboxing or body percussion. All great things to increase your rhythmic um, awareness and um, then you are perfectly prepared to use this once you can practice on the drum kit. And of course there are some interesting gadgets like those aero drums where you just play in the air and depending where in the space you hit you hear the corresponding sound of the drum kit. But I don't recommend that and there is a reason for it. We usually hold the stick very loosely in our hands, very relaxed and use the rebound so the stick bounces back on its own. Now when you play just into the air you have to grip the stick more tightly in order not to lose it and this way you form the habit of gripping more tightly than you should. And also usually the movement of your wrist is stopped because you hit a surface. Now you don't and the muscles in your forearm have to stop the movement of the wrist themselves and this way you may overstretch them. So I guess those things can be fun but if you're looking at sensible and effective practicing they're not the way to go. This is also why I don't recommend air drumming. Again can be fun and can be a great workout but I don't think it's good for your technique and really not the way to go if you're looking at sensible and effective practicing. Then I would rather recommend getting a cheap compact 
uh, electronic drum kit where you hit a real surface and also have small pedals so you can practice your coordination. Next one is one of my favorites because it's a great excuse to watch some videos. It's visual learning. We know that when we closely watch someone executing a movement, in our brain the same processes occur just as they would if we ourselves would execute that movement. So go and watch some tutorial or performance videos. But two disclaimers. First one is, whatever you are watching should have some connection to what you are doing, what you are practicing, to your level of skill. If you are be uh, a beginner, there's no use in watching a crazy drum solo, maybe for motivation, but not for visual learning, because you're not able to put yourself in that drummer's position. If you are a beginner, you should watch some uh, moderate tutorial videos with some demonstrations and try to imagine that you are playing what you are watching. And if you are an intermediate or pro drummer, then you watch something that matches your skill or is a little bit above your skill level. And the second one is, it has to be an active process. There's no use in just having a video on in the background. You have to be very involved and imagine that you are playing right now. The next one is closely related to the visual learning. It's pure mental practice. There are some very interesting clinical studies on that topic, like for example with people who had a broken leg and in the hospital they vividly imagined training with a leg press. And in these, in these people the leg muscles did not atrophy as much as in other patients. And we can do the same thing on the drums or on any instrument. So if you are sick or injured or for any other reason you can't or are not allowed to move, you could practice mentally. Once again, it has to be very active, very focused and you have to be very involved. And by the way, this is one of those methods I told you about which you can and should use even though you can practice on your instrument. Because here the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Because mental training is a, an amazing su supplementary method which I use regularly, especially when I prepare for tours or for studio recordings. This is a time where I practice a lot, sometimes up to six hours a day, and that's of course very hard on the body. So some of this time I just practice mentally and I found that it is a perfect combination because my body can recuperate while my mind is still active and interestingly, um, in mental practice, sometimes you are able to find the cause of errors or problems better than when you are actively playing on your instrument. Of course, mental training is such a huge topic. This is just a very short introduction. There are great books on that. I talk about it in my workshops and as I said, more uh, in other videos on this channel. Next tip. As I said, when you are on the instrument, you should use the limited time very efficiently. So when you are not on the instrument, you could use that time to prepare your practice session or the rehearsal so you can spend the time on the instrument in the best way possible. And one way is to transcribe something you want to play, like a solo or a song. If you are able to write down sheet music, and I think it's a valuable skill, but you don't have to be able to do so, then there is another benefit it's again mental practice because I find this all the time. When I transcribe a song, I feel like I don't even have to play it because I very actively processed it already. So writing down is a great way um, to practice a song already. And if you're not able to write sheet music, you could just find your own system. Write just the song structure or you make your practice plan. This has also the benefit that it primes you for whatever lies ahead. So you prepare your mind for the next practice session. And my last tip for today, read a good book. <laughs> In my eyes, being a fully fledged, well rounded musician also includes knowing about music theory, music history. You have to know about the tradition in which you are playing and learning, and also learn a little bit about the psychology of learning. Because if you know how your brain works, you can structure your learning process much better. So here are some of my most favorite books in that regard. In part they are workbooks, but mostly they are readers. And those books will definitely get you ahead as a musician, I promise you. Because 
you will gain some new insights, some new ideas, what you want to practice, but mostly how to practice more effectively. And there's some great motivation in those books so that when you are finally sitting down at your instrument, you know what to practice, how to practice and have just more energy and use your time in the best way possible. So those were my tips on how to practice most effectively without your own drum kit. I hope you have some more tips. Please write it in the comments below. And finally, let me say this. If you own a drum kit or even a recording studio, a music store, a practice room, something like that, why don't you help out somebody else, someone who can't afford that? Why don't you post a notice somewhere or make an ad online where you offer other people to practice on your drum kit, maybe for a small donation. That would be so kind of you. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell because every week there are new videos on drums, music, learning and personal growth. If you want to watch my videos without advertisements, please support me on Patreon because if we get 25 people at least to support me on Patreon, all my videos will be ad free. And also here are two more videos on effective learning, effective practicing. I hope you like those. See you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.